Hey y'all, welcome to the Coyote Trapping School podcast, episode number 32. This episode, we're going to be talking about the NAFA, um, well, kind of fur prices in general from the spring fur sales or winter fur sales. Uh, I apologize for my voice. Uh, I got a little bit of sore throat crud, uh, but I know the NAFA auction just finished, North American Fur Auctions, uh, just finished last week. So this is the, <clears throat> excuse me, the first full week of March. I think that's right. Um, so NAFA auction finished last week and I actually have um, Fur Harvesters auction is part of the Saga Furs auction that's held in uh, Finland next week uh, so they're, they're, uh, all their furs are, are there uh, showing excuse me trying to not sound so too raspy and hoarse but all their furs are open for their, for their buyers to look at and see right now and then they'll start they'll start selling next week so um, that would be another interesting one to follow up and I, I'll try to keep y'all posted on that as well but I've been getting some some uh, with <clears throat> excuse me with the uh, first season closing up and and stopping running the line and you know in, in kind of fur prep mode now I'm trying to get things ready to sell or tan or what what have you um, I've got some questions about about the uh, NAFA sale that just happened last week you know I've, I've got some fur up there from last year when I sent and so I was going to go I'm going to go through the the auction report NAFA's auction report then also go through um, my fur that I sent you know if you, if you followed me for the last two seasons you know I've done a daily trap line video what I catch and and kind of summarize and all that so um, I sent all, I got all that fur up, up to NAFA last year in time for the July auction so it's been this will be the third auction but through the July there was a December January auction or maybe an early January auction and then this February March auction and so I've almost I think clearanced all of my furs out from up there but just gonna talk about that and a couple of local auctions that I found that I think is kind of interesting <clears throat> so starting off with this the, the most recent NAFA auction this February March auction Again, coyotes were a huge, you know, that's the main driver. That's where most of the interest is right now, the, the very much money anyway. Um, otters were mainly withdrawn. What actually, what I noticed, what I found, that there was a, a decent, apparently there was a, a decent amount of private treaties going on after the close of the sale. So what that is, if you're not familiar with, with uh, NAFA, you know, these, there's a couple of large auction houses, mainly North American Fur Auctions and Fur Harvesters Auctions, that um, you ship your fur to. And the one good thing about NAFA, at least in the south here, in the southeast, is there are agents around in, in uh, you know, most regions. In some areas, there are agents in every state. But down here, there's a couple of agents for the regions, and they'll come around, and they'll actually pick your fur up. So you may have to meet them somewhere, but they'll pick your fur up and handle getting it to the, the auction site or the auction house so that's a plus but it does have to be dried it's got to be stretched and dried now they do offer some fleshing services and the last time I looked honestly it wasn't it's pretty darn reasonable um, the catch is you can't take your fur to one of the local pickups green you're gonna have to ship it there and so and, and as you'll see in a minute you don't really wind up with much left over if uh, if you do that from a southern perspective. Um, so anyway, I'll just I'm just going to kind of run through here uh, a couple of high points. Hit a couple of high points. Otter. Um, there were almost 8,000 otter offered. It was mainly withdrawn from the auction, and I noticed that when I was watching the the main day that Wild Fur sold, I looked and I was I was kind of just checking to keep a tab on what what of mine had sold, and I had one piece that sold five dollars it made my stomach turn one otter it was a low-end otter must have been a small one I guess um, and it sold and everything else was bought back I think I wound up selling on that day I sold the one otter and otter and maybe three or four beavers <clears throat> and that was it and everything else was bought back well then well, as I a couple days well this week as I started doing some research I got back on there and looked and more of my fur had sold so what happens is, when it, when it says bought back, that means that NAFA didn't get the prices that they were wanting for those that lot of fur. 
So instead of selling, they just opted to no sell it. I don't know if you can turn it off cold again naturally after season goes out. I have a little heater running. I just realized it was running, so I turned that off so it's not making too much noise. But anyway, so so what you'll often see is buyback or bought back. That means they opted not to sell. They're going to hold off and hope that they can get more money at a later later sale. Or what oftentimes will happen is they'll wind up doing some backroom bargaining, bargaining and bartering, and they'll wind up with what they call a private treaty. So um, they'll wind up selling the fur uh, instead of in the auction after the fact. And um, you know, I don't know what the I don't know what that looks like, but that's what some of my fur did. So. In their official report that was pretty much released the day after um, the sale, it says, you know, otters were mainly withdrawn. Evidently, there was some amount of um, private treaty action going on after the auction. Wild mink was the next item. They had about 21,000 offered, about 35% sold, not a great clearance, at about nine, just over nine bucks a pop. You know, and that's one of the, the big things that's having an impact on the fur market right now and the low fur prices is there's a lot of ranch fur on the market um, that's trying to be moved. So um, that's not helping because that's all that much more fur on the market. Muskrat, just under 200,000 muskrat offered. 98% clearance. So most muskrat sold. Average three fifty, top price of fifteen dollars. I don't think that average on muskrat is, is bad. Um, it sounds low, but muskrat are easy to catch a lot of and they're easy to put up. So uh, you know, several years ago, they were having averages of like eight to ten dollars, which is crazy uh, good, especially considering you know you can catch a lot of muskrat in a short period of time if you got the right habitat. So um, beaver. 33, just over 33,000 offered, sold by 72%, so pretty good clearance on beavers. Easterns averaged 11 bucks, westerns averaged 10 and a quarter. Section three, um, which is what a lot of my beavers fell into, um, were 883, so they're all right there together. Um, and I was, I texted, I was messaging or email with John Zander from Zander Fur, just trying to get a, a feed from him, and he said, you know, the big, the big demand for beavers right now is the hatter market. And uh, so really quality doesn't matter that much. And actually it sounded like when they sell, when he sells to the the, the buyers of the beavers, um, they sell on a pound per pound basis, um, which is kind of interesting. Um, but anyway, you know, not a lot of difference there, honestly. Big difference in price uh, are the top lot. So the top lot Eastern Beaver was a hundred bucks. Not a bad beaver. The top lot Western was 24. The top lot Section 3 was 12. But on the average, not a lot of difference. Red Fox offered just over 60,000. And let's see, I had I had two reds, and neither one of them sold. Um, and it, it says selective demand. And that's one of the things that John Zander mentioned too. He said, for whatever reason, uh, there's no demand, there's no outlet for a Red Fox right now. So, um, Gray Fox, 11,000 offered, mainly withdrawn, and they didn't sell, none of my Red Foxes sold either, so they were all bought back. Raccoon, 250,000 raccoons offered. Now, keep in mind, some of this fur is from this year, but some of it's also carryover from last year, um, what didn't sell. I mean, you know, all of my fur I sent up there last May, so it's been sitting there for eight months. Um, so some of the fur, you know, more northern guys, that their season comes in earlier and all, you know, they can get their fur in because for this sale, the last receiving date has got to be mid-January. So you got to be on top of the ball to, you know, get fur, get fur put up and in on these auctions. 75% um, clearance on raccoons, which is not bad, especially two, I mean, that's 200,000 pelts, you know, moved. Average western or north northern 17, uh, western or north central 11, east eastern north central 683, and Canadian 987. Um, so, you know, that eastern what we're looking at is a 
heck, I'd have been, I'd have been okay with a almost seven dollar average on coons. To be honest with you, um, coyotes, fifty, almost fifty two thousand offered, hundred percent. Every coyote they had sold. Western heavy, average one hundred four bucks. Western semi, um, sixty. Eastern, fifty four. Pretty darn good. Section three, which is a lot of typically what my coyotes will fall into, is a uh, seventeen. Heck, ain't nothing wrong with that. Uh, top lot on the Western Heavy was two hundred ten bucks. Um, so that's I mean coyotes obviously are still in demand. Lynx, it's usually yeah. So for whatever they call lynx, and then they call bobcats lynx cat. This is all lynx. Six thousand offered, eighty percent sales. Not that you know we we deal with those, but uh, sixty one bucks. It's kind of low for links, honestly, in in my opinion. I don't really keep track of that, but you know, links come from Alaska and Canada region. I mean, they're just top notch first. Timberwolf, six hundred thirty one offered, seventy five percent sales, average one hundred forty two dollars. Bears, one hundred percent sold, one hundred sixty offered, average one hundred fifty bucks. Wolverine, ninety five offered, one hundred percent sold, average three forty eight. Three hundred forty eight bucks for a Wolverine, so catch wolverines i'd get after it and then uh bobcats or what they call lynx cats was uh, on the following day and uh there were 8600 offered um the westerns which is typically the higher demand cats those are the real clear bellies real broad white belly clear bellies average uh, 95 percent of those sold average 391 dollars top lot three thousand one hundred dollars. That's pretty. Uh, that's pretty awesome. Southwestern uh, didn't sell quite as good. Sixty-two percent uh, average was eighty bucks. Top lot was one hundred sixty-five. East Canadian was um, sixty-three percent sold. Eighty-two bucks. Top lot one hundred ten. North Central it says selective demand, and that was actually another thing that uh, I had five bobcats still at the auction and. Um, so one of the I'll get into my specific things um, one of the interesting things was they made note that Greece, Turkey, China and Italy were the biggest buyers of Lynx Cat the top lot Lynx uh, top lot Bobcat for $3,100 was bought by Divine Luxury Furs of Castoria, Greece that's pretty cool um, so that's that's kind of a Let's see. Uh, kind of give you an idea of where where they went to. Fifty one thousand coyotes sold, mainly uh, the interest from Hong Kong, China, and Italy. Muskrat sold mainly to Chinese buyers. Raccoons doesn't say who the raccoons were. Typically, raccoons go to the Russian market, um, Russian and Russian China. Uh, Lynx primarily the Greek and Russian market. Uh, doesn't say anything about beavers, although like I said, uh, from, from talking with John Zander, most of the beavers are going to the Hatter market. So, get into my, um, one thing that I didn't, I didn't notice, I've never noticed is, you can go in, there's, you get a detailed auction summary, um, which will be, you know, you, you, you'll get this mailed to you too along with your check but it'll have the species and it'll have the grades um, the grades all the way across if it how many you had what it sold for um, so that's not only available two weeks after the auction but if you go in you know like the day of you can go to current season receipts um, or maybe detailed summary it's one of the two tabs if you log in it's on your kind of bottom right and you can click and you can see just a summary of you know beavers you had eight um, four of them sold and you know they averaged eight bucks or whatever and you can do it like that well there's an option to export that data into like Excel and first time I've ever done this and what is really neat about it is it's got a pre-sale estimated value so that kind of gives you some insight into what NAFA is looking for for that, you know, for the minimum on that that lot, 
which I, I've never looked at this this version before, but that's really interesting to know, especially knowing that things got bought back, and especially knowing that there was a private treaty after the fact. So I had um, four otters sell, average thirteen fifty, which is a punch in the gut. The one thing that brought it down was I had one sell for five bucks, and it was a damage. I mean, it, it was, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. Uh, the other three, two sold for 17 and one sold for 15. The pre-sale estimated value was 19 on to the two and 17 on the other one. So initially, and it, it doesn't show it got bought back here, but I know from when I was looking at it in real time that it did get bought back and then they wound up selling it in private treaty. So I don't, it'd be interesting to know what the bid, if they even got a bid, what the bid was for uh, in the actual auction. Um, Anyway, I, that, I just thought that was kind of neat. I've never seen this before. And so you can actually see on any of your furs that haven't sold what that pre-sale value, estimated value is. Doesn't mean you're going to get it, but um, that's where, <clears throat> that's kind of where NAFA draws the line of where they want to be, or, or if they're going to sell it or not. And it doesn't mean that you will only get that. that, that that's, that's something new that I just noticed, though, that I thought was pretty neat. Four beavers sold. Three of them sold at 950, and one sold at six. It was a small beaver. Um, <clears throat> I had mostly XLs with a three XL, and then the one that sold at six was a large. And um, <clears throat> but again, those three sold at 950. Uh, Nafa's pre-sale value was twelve dollars on two and twelve fifty on the other one. Um, Gray Fox, <clears throat> no sold. They were all bought back, and the value ranged from uh, twelve to twenty bucks on those. Red Fox also bought back. Only had two there. One was value. One was seventeen, or one was seven dollars. One was fourteen. And then Bobcats actually wound up having two sold. Again, those were private treaties. Um, they're my assumption. But uh, they both sold for 25 bucks, which I, I mean that's, <clears throat> and those were actually the smaller of the cats that I had up there. So I don't have any problem. Those were both mediums, so I'm 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 perfectly fine with that. My bigger cats, they're holding on to, and I, I appreciate that. Um, their pre-sale value, I got one of them at 50, one of them at 35, and one of them at 25. So um, anyway, that that was kind of interesting to to know that if you go in there and and, and click on it. I should have looked it up again, but click on currencies and receipts and then download data and you kind of see what their what their estimation is of what they want for that lot. So uh, nothing nothing spectacular there price wise for sure. And a little disappointing honestly on the otters, beavers. It's not not terribly dis not surprising. And then the cats, I I'm fine with that. You know, 25, 30 bucks on cats is uh, you know, kind of what I expect anyway. So, but that's, that's just a portion of the fur that I sent last May. <clears throat> and like I said, here we are in March, and those, those are just selling. I've still got one, two, three, four, four beavers, five grays, two reds, and three cats up there, four cats up there, actually. So I've still got a little bit of fur up there that will be at least, unless they do another private treaty, at least the next next sale so I've got I've also got and I, this is gonna get a little bit long-winded but just trying to give you a feel for southern Georgia fur you know what it's uh, what my fur is sold for for in the last year and this is obviously a down market um, but I you know I did have some coyotes that sold in the June sale when I first uh, when I first sent them up there so I was gonna you know kind of get in go through all that but um, so there was also a sale the uh, right around the first of the year of, of 19, 2019. And so at that sale, um, beavers, all my beavers were bought back unsold. All my bobcats were unsold. I had uh, my otters were unsold. What did sell was coons. So let's see, I had...
50, about 55 coons up there, I guess. 33 sold, 22 unsold. I wound up selling. Now here it is. I had uh, 34 raccoons, 33 sold, one not sold. I don't know where it got where it is now, but anyway. And it ranged. I had several double XL selects, which is pretty good for for here. Uh, I actually had quite a few of those, and, and I I tried to, and I, I, I tried to, I'm doing it this year too, as I'm putting that fur up, try to kind of self-grade and self-select, and and because uh, I've been doing, you know, some other stuff with tanning and all, is uh, pick the, the better, larger, better furs to sell, to send off to sell, and then some of the smaller ones are the ones that I'll get tanned, so I'm trying to, trying to kind of self-select and, and not be sending all my low my, my poor stuff down there that I know is going to struggle to sell anyway. But so that being said, all of my all of my better coons sold, um, and the majority of my coons sold. Um, I averaged four dollars and eighteen cents. So I had some highs of seven fifty for those double XL selects, and then uh, it went all the way down to one sold for a dollar, semi damaged. Uh, several sold for two fifty, three dollars. So overall, you're looking at a four dollar average on coons. This is what I what I experienced southern coons at the January Napa sale. Taking it all the way back to when I first sent my fur up there last year. So I got my fur in in time for the July sale. Just following up on that. So from that sale, let's see if I can get this, this guy here. How much I had? I sent originally. I sent 15 beavers, eight coyotes, six grays, two reds, six cats, four otters, and 51 coons. Um, and that reflects. You know, I've still got a handful of those that'll go into the next sale. Is I don't know if there's a May. I think there's a May sale because the last receiving date is March 20th. In the end of this month. So out of that initial um, <clears throat> offering that I sent up there, it was actually some of my smaller beavers that did sell. And this is again last July, so this is dated a little bit, but um, they sold average seven fifty on those, which is not not terrible. Um, and then I also had five more that sold and averaged nine twenty. On those, I mean, that's I take nine, ten bucks, uh, pretty regular. No, wait a minute, no, wait a minute, that's coyotes. Sorry, sorry, seven fifty on beavers. My coyotes, I had, uh, I had several uh, section threes. This thing's getting kind of confusing on me. That's a beaver. So I had several section threes. Um, no sold for a buck fifty. That hurts. That hurts to know that you put all the work and effort, and that's one of those things that if you've got a fur buyer, um, you know, it, and you've got or you've got the experience to look at it, and be like, you know, that's that's not worth selling. That's a that's a cheap hide. That you know, then if you can have a tan or whatever, um, that's the option I would like to have because. I just assume keep a buck fifty coyote if I put all that time into it and do something else with it. Uh, but I did have some go um, had one go for tw uh, twenty, and then uh, all the way down to four. So I averaged on my better coyotes nine twenty, and then on those section threes, the, the, they were all big coyotes, but they weren't they were damaged um, a buck fifty. So that hurt my feelings, but that's that's life, and that's. That's why a lot of folks in the South, if they get into it, they're doing they're doing live market because that's that's the only way to make anything off coyotes and lately foxes too, you know. None of my otters, none of my bobcats sold, obviously. None of my otters sold at that time. Raccoons, I had 17 that sold on that sale and it wasn't my biggest ones but they were some they were some largest select largest average three and a quarter 
So there again, I mean, that still keeps you around the three, four bucks. Um, so that kind of, and that's all, that's all that's sold up there. And that kind of gives you a summary. The other thing I was want to point out, I've got a couple of, a couple of local auctions that I was going to touch on too. But the other thing that I was going to point out is <clears throat> when you ship to Napa, you've got different fees and things. So you got a shipping charge and I'm not, I can't remember what that is. I thought it showed it on here, but, uh, you know, you're going to have a shipping charge factored in if you meet one of their agents and they handle it. Uh, they've got a CITES charge, so Bobcats and Otters have got a ta CITES tags. I don't exactly know what, what they do, but there's a there's a charge for CITES tags. For any fur out, excuse me, for any fur out species, so your coyotes, fox, bobcats, there's a drumming charge. You know, I mean, they're trying to make the fur look better for the buyers. You know, they're trying to make it look as good as possible. There again, that was something that you're going to get nicked with. And uh, I can't remember... I don't remember what it is. I should have looked it up. But for all of my furs, well, let's see. It was 32 bucks, the drumming charge. So, I sent eight coats, two reds, six grays, and 16. So I sent 22. That don't seem, that don't seem right. Be like a buck fifty, and I think it's I think it's different depending on the species. But I mean, a buck fifty on my coyotes, I, I lost money there. You know, just barely. I lost. I, mean, I broke even, I guess you could say, on them. Um, but you're gonna have that drumming charge. You got the magazine subscription charge. Um, all that is gonna come out, and then you also have the commission, right? And if you Unless you opt out of being in the Wild Fur Shippers Council, you're going to have that fee as well. So, and the commission is 11% auction commission. If you're a member of the Wild Fur Shippers Council, that you get 2% off of that. So your commission sitting on 9%. So those are definitely other things to keep in mind. Is you got these other charges that uh, that all come out of of what your your actual take on this. So then I found several state association auctions that I was pretty impressed with the, the data that was up already um, from these different state association auctions. And so I was just going to touch on a couple of these and there were several there were several western ones that were out and I, and I just pulled some kind of southeastern ones just because I know that's you know a lot of y'all um, where we're at and just to kind of give you an idea and, and comparable to what I just went through from my my fur at Napa. So, the one thing with these these uh, association auctions is it, it all depends on the buyers, but they may not require that all the fur be dried. So, and I, I attended uh, a couple years ago. I attended the Arkansas Trappers Association first sale, and the, I'd say the majority of fur there was green. And they, they were the only, and I don't know if the, the other ones required to be dried. Arkansas was the only one that broke out the prices between dry and green. And so I like that. Um, so I was just going to run through their sale. I think it was in February, maybe. The date's not on here, but it was their 2019 sale. So dry, uh, <clears throat> and there wasn't, I should have added this up, but uh, I didn't. But anyway, um, they sold two reds, 18 bucks. Not bad, especially considering I can't give away red. I mean, I can't give away reds. That's uh, that's better than Napa's got my pre-sale value on the ones that I've got there. So, Otter averaged 27.25. This is dry now. Beats the heck out of my 13.50 that I got. Um, so I'll, I'll do them. I'll kind of compare them across the board. So dry red foxes, two of them now, not a, not a huge sample size, but two dry reds, 18. One green, so green is not flesh, just skin it, throw it in the freezer, thaw it out at time of the sale so the buyer can look over the full hide. 22 bucks, 
no work into it other than skinning. I like that. Uh, otter, they only, four dried otters, average 27 and a quarter. 34 green otters, average 25, 35. So, for two bucks, I'll take that sucker frozen. Or I, you know, I'll just, I'll just get it, throw it in the freezer all day long. And that's what, that's one thing I like how they broke it out, and it really, that's something that really standing out to me is, at this sale, there's no reason to, there's no reason to dry, put the, put the extra effort into drying your fur. Um, mink, seven dried mink, averaged eight bucks. Four green mink, averaged six and a quarter. 23 gray fox, dry, averaged 12.80. Seven gray fox, green, averaged 13.71. Now, this also does take into account fur quality. You know, there's no, um, you know, this doesn't have it, hasn't have any lots listed or sizes or anything like that. So it genuinely could have been that those seven gray foxes were larger gray foxes, better quality gray foxes than the others, but regardless, you know, that's a dollar more for not putting in the work of stretching them. Caster, that's one thing we had, didn't talk about that wasn't in the Napa sale. Caster is a, uh, you ought to be saving caster. If you're not, you're crazy. 47 pounds of dried caster. Um, highest was $71 a pound. Average $45 a pound. Um, and that, that seems low from what I've been hearing from other folks. They didn't have eight and a half pounds of green caster. That averaged fifty dollars a pound. Actually, I, it's it's really really surprising me the green versus the dried. Two bobcats that were put up dried were right at twenty five bucks average. Twenty four bobcats that were green averaged forty bucks. Eighty two raccoons dried averaged two twenty eight two dollars and twenty eight cents. 24 raccoons green averaged a dollar. Um, that hurts, man. That that hurts. But there again, I I just do not have the the time into it and take a dollar less. I, I, that just that hurts selling a coon for a dollar. Uh, 27 muskrats dried averaged 171. Three muskrats green averaged 67 cents. Not really worth talking about. 16 coyotes dried average $15. Six coyotes green average $14. Here's a big one. 53 beavers dried averaged 1133. 300 and four, I don't know, I don't maybe this is a high typo but I don't think it is. 342 beavers average 510 green. So um uh, I don't know that the commission, another another thing, like I was like I was pointing out earlier, the commission here is five percent, and uh, that goes right back into the Arkansas Trappers Association. So that's a plus too. The key with these fur, you know, the local association fur sales is you got to have fur buyers there, um, and so that's that's one thing I want to try to talk with some of these guys and and figure out more about. Because like I've said before, I mean, I think that's I think that's the one thing that's really hurting trapping in, in certain areas is because. You know, if, if a guy could skin his catch, throw it in the freezer, and take it somewhere, and even if he gets a dollar a coon, he, he's still getting something for trapping versus just trapping to throw that raccoon in the ditch. Nope, nobody likes to do that. So, um, you know, I feel like not having an outlet is really hurting trapping in certain areas. Uh, Tennessee was the other one I pulled. They had a sale in February. They also had a sale in March, but I couldn't find the results of it published yet. Uh, possum, as I know all of y'all are super excited to hear about, and I, I'm assuming all these are dried prices. These, this didn't have a difference between dry and green. Possum averaged 36 cents. Yikes. Bobcats, they only had two, uh, averaged 31.50. Not, not a surprise. Uh, muskrats, 18. They had 18 muskrats. They averaged 3.50, so that was right in line with uh, Napa, right? Raccoon, they sold 106, averaged three dollars. Skunk, they only sold five, but they averaged 980. That ain't too bad, right? Otter, they only sold four, averaged 2575. There again, beat the pants off of what I got at Napa. 
Beaver, they sold 39, averaged 471. That's not pretty. You know what I mean? My Napa, and and that's where, that's where all this stuff, you know, in the in the grand scheme of things, it probably all kind of evens out, because um, my my Beavers sold for better than that. Um, Red Fox, they only sold three, averaged 11.33. Gray Fox sold two, averaged averaged um, 21.50. They sold two coyotes, averaged a dollar a piece. That hurts. Um, and then there's another column. I'm not sure what that is. So the last one is a West Virginia Trappers Association auction. And uh, this was actually, uh, John Zander said his father, he's, he's been going to this West Virginia auction for um, about 20 years. And I think they bought most of the most of the raccoons and stuff. Um, so, but apparently, I mean, this, this is a pretty big, a pretty big auction. I didn't figure up the, uh, I didn't figure up the number of pieces in, in uh, these other two, but at this West Virginia auction, there were just shy of 4,000 pieces of fur sold there. So that's, that's a uh, pretty significant. They also sold deer antlers and then a bunch of different roots and ginseng and stuff. But, uh, just going through real quick. 50, 50 skunks sold at three, uh, let's see, 50 skunks that averaged two bucks. <laughs> 331 possums averaged a buck 61. 154 nutria averaged 80 cents. Ugh. 37 mink averaged 680. 285 muskrat averaged 457. Not a bad price on muskrat. 111 beaver averaged 1323. That ain't bad. 54 otter averaged 2656. Not bad again. Uh, 97 gray fox averaged 22 bucks. 293 red fox averaged 14. Not very often. It's not logical, I guess, to think the grays are outperforming reds, but that's been the case lately. Four fisher sold for 42 bucks. 508 coyotes. That's a pretty. That's a pretty significant number of coyotes. Uh, averaged uh, 1852. So not bad. And you figure that's. I don't know where all that fur comes from. I'd imagine some of that maybe comes from North Carolina. You guys can can comment um, for sure and let me know. But um, I would still consider that kind of semi-southern fur, probably a little better than what we got in Georgia, but still not uh, Pennsylvania, New York size style fur. So there again, I mean, I'd, I'd take twenty dollar coyotes all day long. Bobcat, 177 bobcats. They averaged 41.28. Not bad. 1,787 raccoons. They averaged 4.52. That's a little better than what I did um, in the uh, January sale at Napa, but not a whole lot. And then, uh, then the rest of them, they get into um, they get into some roots and stuff. But overall value, and the major, like I said, the majority of it being fur, was um, $45,000. In fur sales, that's I was I was really impressed. That that's a that's a in my opinion that's a pretty darn spectacular fur sale. I've never been the, the only fur sale that I've been to in person has been Arkansas Trappers Association fur sale, and it's uh their their total sales were eighty three hundred bucks, so nowhere near. So that, that's a that may be a, a sale worth going to just to see see. Um, but anyway. That kind of gives you an overall, and they don't they don't say anything about commission, but I think five percent is probably fairly standard for the for the uh, associations and things. Um, and then, like I said, the, the thing that you got to keep in mind is there are other fees, costs, commissions that come out when you're shipping the NAFA. Um, and and one of the things I don't know at West Virginia because that's a lot of pieces of fur, but like it. The Arkansas auction, if you didn't like the prices you were getting, you could just no-sale and take your fur with you. And uh, from that perspective, I like that because, you know, I, there's, I just soon have it tanned or do something else with it than sell fur at a certain level. Um, and then the other benefit, like I said, is these auctions, you get your check stroke right there and, and your fur's gone and you're, you're done with it. You're not waiting eight months to see if you sold your fur yet you know so there's pluses and minuses to all this and uh i just wanted to kind of lay out the you know what what i've seen with my fur 
some of these other options and uh, let you, you know, kind of weigh it out and, and figure out. Obviously, you know, the NAFTA is going to continue to have sales up until, you know, through this time next year, whereas in most of these state associations, they're done until this time next year. So, you know, if you're like me and you're, you know, you're trying to get your fur put up after season, uh, you're kind of in a little bit of a pickle there. So, anyway, not a great market, but it's not stopping me from trapping, and, and uh, I'm excited. I've got some other ideas and some other things going, and so I'm excited to be working on that stuff and, and kind of staying a little bit trapping and, and fur focused and fur mind mind uh, mind frame throughout the year. So, I, uh, I hope y'all are having a if you if you're winning any of these sales, I hope you had good results. If you're shipping your fur, I hope you have good results. We'll see we'll, we'll see what the future sales do, and uh, I'll try to give an update. Maybe not this in depth, but once the uh, the results of the saga first sale in Finland come out, try to run over them and if there's if there's anything different anyway. So hope y'all enjoyed. Hope it was useful, and uh, hope you're trying to figure out how you can get the most out of your fur and how you can get more fur and. Uh, We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.